Do you believe in magic? Because certainly BBL does, and they managed to pull a rabbit out of their hat and most importantly, pick up the win against a very game and prepared DRX on Ascent. It was a nail biter, top to bottom, but BBL managed to come through. And what a game that was. Mimi, just watching how BBL, it's just, you, you could, we could, individually highlight each player, but just as a unit, they were doing unorthodox things and it was working for them I mean, so it well. was fantastic. It looked like after the first half, it was just going to be a repeat of Pearl. Bye-bye to BBL as I consume a, a nice little tasty snack there. But uh, yeah, that was impressive <laughs> out of BBL. Um, they managed to rally back in such a big way on their defensive side. They really managed to finally get control of the pace, taking things forward, finding those early fights in main, and not allowing DRX to have any of those openers that they so desperately wanted. All right, this is one of the things we were talking about, was getting that momentum early and being able to ride with it. And that's exactly what they did. It was just gorgeous play after gorgeous play. The decision making here from the side of BBL so much more comfortable, so much more on point compared to Pearl. Maybe that's a map that they still just kind of have to sort out for themselves. Maybe they got a little too lost in the sauce by going for the Yoru. Either way, this was a complete polar opposite performance from them here on Ascent. You can see very clearly why they decided to pick it. We kind of teed off how this was a bold selection. DRX have not lost yeah. on this map since they lost to FPX at Copenhagen. Wow. Yeah. Who then went on to win that. <laughs> it is so. an insane performance for them to win on this map. Uh, and I think what was so important was that this this uh, composition for DRX, they really want to be taking that extremity control and going into these site execs where they can combine that different initiator utility to set up buzz. But BBO is always beating them to that space, shutting that down, never letting DRX play the game they wanted to, which was an exact inverse of Pearl and makes it all the more impressive that BBL made that comeback happen. Yeah, and, and also, too, uh, you were also looking for superstars. You're looking for players who are going to step up in a moment. And, and you know, I, I stats aren't always everything. But really, with the way that Turco is playing, I, I think it's safe to say that the man had the game that you want to have in that moment in time, Seth. I mean, we were talking about Aslan kind of being the one to be that side anchor to really get them you know, into the game there in that second half, but Turco leveled up out of nowhere. Everything was calm and fine for DRX until the Turco Nation attacked, and boy did he, he was just putting up such solid numbers at every twist and turn. It seemed like DRX was just never prepared for where Turco was going to be, whether he was sitting back at Boathouse or whether he was approaching from tree out onto that A site. He was consistently finding value and taking people down at DRX as they tried to enter in. And I think when it was the B site, it was really him who was able to lock things down, hold back site, dodge that utility, flash back out and fight. But it was the same when he was rotating to help his teammates on A. BBL always managed to keep their controller player alive in the site. It was really great anchor play by Brave that gave time for this guy to come on over, for Turco to flash through and help with that fight and chunk those executes with DRX. Well, now as we uh, take a moment to reset here, and we get ready for map three, which is going to be Haven. Uh, look, I, I wish I could I could say like, oh yeah, you know, I do think BBL are going to ride this momentum. But let's be honest, I mean, DRX, they're such a force. They're a force on Ascent as well and, and took BBL most definitely to the limit. I'm not saying that it's, you know, oh, DRX are going to win, BBL is going to win. Heck, at this point, I don't care. I just want this to go all the way to distance, Seth. I know much of the trick in of yourself. <laughs> I mean, look, we've seen DRX get frazzled in the past when they get pushed into a position like this. And with the stakes as high as they are, you have to just wonder what is running through their brains right here. How do you reset after finally being defeated in the map that you have not suffered a loss on in so very long? I mean, we're talking about months and months of having just dominance on ascent. Now they're going to Haven. This is formerly their bread and butter, something that they consistently have performed on, but they also kind of went, I mean, I'm talking about in Korea, but they went two and two on this map at Champions. Yeah, that is where it gets a little interesting because there is a chance here, but on the side of BBL, we need to know that Ascent is their map. You saw that Yinsu t uh, tweet in the break. This is like the Turkish map. Turkish teams have something about Ascent and BBL yeah. is really that squad. But here on Haven, there's a lot more questions. I think that we can probably expect DRX to stick with their same composition that they've played for a while, where they're bringing out that Jet, the Killjoy, the Breach, even when it was the Raze meta, they just kind of switch out the Bane for the Sova. I don't know, they'll probably go back to the Sova is what I would guess, but uh, on the side of BBL, where are they gonna head with this one? Because again, this team has not played on the offseason with their new IGL, so they're kind of a question. Yeah, and I think that is, uh, a very great point, you know, and, and this is going to really test uh, Solchini's uh, calling skills 
all the way to the limit there, and Stax is going to make sure that he's going to push him as far as he possibly can. Prime Gaming Agent Select is underway here. You see the usual choices, and I do agree. I don't think we're going to get much in the way of divergence here, uh, Seth. Uh, honestly, for either side. Yeah, I mean, it, the only difference that we're seeing right now is Mako's going for the Omen. Brave is going to be going for the Astra. So other than that, we're going to have everything just perfectly evened up across the board between these two. So it's really just going to come down to who can execute better coming into this map. Stax is back on his bread and butter, the original pick that made him famous with that breach. You've got Buzz there at this time, obviously on the jet rather than RB at the time when they first really kind of broke out. But this is going to come down to execution. This is all about who can just find that momentum and really ride with it. Yeah, on Ascent, BBL proved that they can make this a close match, but now here on one of DRX's best maps, they need to take it home or they're gonna be the ones flying home. Well, you know what, guys? I called into production. I asked him if they could get me an oxygen tank for Achilles because his heart probably <laughs> can't take it. And someone, unfortunately, is going home. Is it DRX or BBL? Here's Brennan Sideshow with the cast. The scenario that we find ourselves in as well is this series goes to map number three. You know, largely unthinkable, I think, at the beginning of the day in terms of, you know, what we've just seen. But BBL have come out with some great resilience, I think. Being able to take map number two, and now we head into Haven, an absolute masterclass performance coming off the back of Kyushin on his jet. Yeah, I mean, the jet battle is going to be a real one to watch, right? Kyushin are yeah. playing up against Buzz, but it's also on this map how you set all of them up. You know, you've got the, the drone timings, the breach to me is the big one. Because when you when you end up playing these comps, a lot of it comes down to fault lines and flashes to be able to get your jet into a pushed up position. And already actually, you're seeing BBL looking like they want to get really aggressive on the pistol. And this looks like a walk down mid off the back of fault line, flash, pressure towards headshot box. Yeah, I mean, you can see it now being applied. Kushin is not wasting any time. All that util being used, but he is spotted out. Dash still enabled, forced out as well, just from that one fault line. And so, early little test of how good DRX's default is. BBL come away unscathed, but without a kill of their own. I love how active Kushner is being as well. He's already pushed him mid, he was spotted in just a moment, a blink of an eye, he already updrafted onto that high ground angle, but a bit of a reposition now as the players are just rotating around. This crossfire setup that they've got going on in Garage could be quite difficult to break, but See what utility ends up being committed. Wow, it's so tense, this battle for Garage currently. Smoke goes in and Brave will realize. Dash enabled, off to the side, and it cuts up the crosshair placement enough. Whoa, that was Incredibly sticky. Incredibly labored, yeah. Really, really difficult for them. A TP into the back of the site and a bit of run and gun on top. But it does leave it just down to Aslan. And that is a gutting way for BBL to begin because so much of how they won on Ascent was powered by winning the pistol round, right? They won pistol follow-up on, on round one and on round 13. And more so than just that, the Brave and Turco duo on Ascent was fantastic. And they're the duo that just fumbled a little bit there in terms of the garage hold. But it was a hard one to deal with. So that's the pistol round going the way of DRX. And it sets them off on completely different footing compared to the previous map. Yeah. It's going to be a very, very different task ahead of them, honestly. The fact that they were able to get those easy rounds in the pistol round set them up quite nicely, gave them the buffer that they needed at least. But now it's DRX are in the driving seat. Sochni calling for his team for a gamble stack over towards C. I wonder if they're going to push or do something funky, maybe just sit here quietly. So they are holding the fault line. Yeah, take a look at their positioning now. All yeah. five players from BBL around here. But there's a recon derby in primed. I mean, it does look like there's something set here for BBL. Possibly just off the orb. Yeah, orb being tapped. There, there it is. is. Nice little swing and face pushed up. Mako's on the corner, but traded out. The question is, can he reclaim this weapon? It's being guarded ever so slightly. But it's getting the backup and help with the rest of his team now, so. Fortunately, no prizes to be gained by BBL. It was a cute idea, though. It was. It was a nice idea, a little set play to make your eco round have a bit more of a sting to it. I think DRX are going to be able to just come away with this one fairly easily. A commitment into C doesn't have Brave or Sushni in a position where they can do too much damage. 
Unless Brave is able to wrap really fast, but the, the oh. flank should be watched. Yeah, Lombard's there, in fact. It certainly is being watched. Yeah, even if it didn't catch the contact, so. It is cool, though, to see Sochni call rounds like this. When, when you are an inexperienced IGL stepping onto the stage for the first time, battling against a team that you really, you know, is more proven than you. Yeah. You don't want to admit that they're better than you, but you, you know that there's more evidence for that. They've got the experience, they've been deeper in tournaments. Yeah, but when IGLs tend to be in that position, it's pretty common to just freeze up, yeah. to forget your own game plan, to not call anything aggressive. And I think what we've really seen on Ascent, we didn't see that on Pearl. They really did freeze up. But on Ascent, we started to see them get proactive, get Kyushin into really aggressive positions, try some set strats out. It looks like they're trying to begin Haven on a similar foot. Yeah, a bit of an evolution, you know, adding the layers to the game plan. Without a doubt, no, I completely agree. I think Suchini's addition has been quite good to them because BBL always that team. They've got the individuals. Kushina, how long have we talked about it? You know, the Turkish jet, this guy's able to just make magic out of nothing. But when you get to these really high level end of tournament matches, when you're up against the best in the world, let's face it, Listen, DRX, one of the favorites to you know, potentially win the whole of lock-in. Might have to address that expectation as yeah. we get later on in Haven. Not even guaranteed to make the next round. Not just yet. Oh, this is aggressive from Turco and Brave. That duo again. It's a double peak, Mako. Just holding the corner. TP's the safety. And that smoke just puts a dampener on anything that they were attempting to try and get aggressive. It really is so aggro. From an Astro and a Breach. Oh, that's just a bait as well. A close jiggle, Buzz takes the fight as well, just swing it at a slightly wider angle. The sight is theirs for the taking. But this is going to be a very tough retake. BBL are anticipating winning this round, but no recon dart. Turco's got to provide all of the updates. Whoa! This is absolute chaos now, but he's dropped himself down, is dealt with. Well, no one else on his team was ready to go, though. Yeah, I felt like it was odd. It was just holding in that position, but... Was okay. that a misclick? Did he fall out of the window rather than deliberately go for it? I, I, I don't know whether he tried to find a timing or what there. Caught unaware, I suppose, by the smoke fading, but I, I did think it was a bit unusual that he was holding in there. Brutal. Brutal start to the map from BBL, the exact opposite of what they were hoping for. Yeah. And what they had, able, had been able to achieve. There's that little... You know, I mean, that's just great. Yeah, bait yeah. and switch, basically, yeah. that Sochini falls for. Most of the time, when you grab a bit of information there, you just need to leave instantly. Now drop down to those weaker weapons. Nothing quite so much as a stack like BBL were trying on their last eco, but holding with a nice little crossfire. Dash up, close and personal, straight through, and a bit of a disengage, just trying to catch. The sightline onto Aslan there, just weaving in and out, back and forth. Plant's gonna go down without too many issues, especially as the smoke start to dissipate. And DRX have just gone for such a simple approach to this round, keeping it safe, yeah. and showcasing one of their C execs. Prime game in flawless. Now here's the question, can BBL pick themselves up and come out with a response? All of their aggressive movements in the early round have failed. If you look at what was working for them on Ascent, their early round game was, was really powerful. They were up plus six in first kills to first deaths on Ascent yeah. against DRX. And a lot of that, like you said, Bren, was how aggressive and proactive Kushina was playing. He was involved in 43 du uh, 44 duels <laughs> on that map. That's ridiculous. That is actually absurd. That's almost two around. Yeah. He's more than a spearhead at that point. He's the entire bloody weapon, but... Now we see them with guns in their hands. So BBL, that's an opportunity. But again, look at this pace that's being injected into it. DRX, not wasting any time. The back of the sides. Oh. Needs to be a one fight for Aslan, but he just does not catch it. It's a great read from Aslan as well. Oh, oh no. And it's fallen to pieces. Just a bit of a miracle play from Brave as he does. And it's just beam down two players lined up for them. But will anything else be offered for them? Has brought them into this 2v2. Now the aftershock. Lovely angle that's been forced and collecting themselves. Just for the moment, now the defuse. Being stuck half on it already. It's up to RB to see if he can deny. One after the other! There's no shot in hell. Oh, that is a heartbreaker for BBL. 
the round started so terribly for them, and yet through sheer heroics coming out from Brave and then socially on the site as well, they had actually got themselves into a winning position until RB drove a dagger into their backs. Yeah, oh, I mean, how many times have we seen RB playing Killjoy on this map coming out with something ridiculous? <laughs> the Red Bull Clutch, I mean, just one of many. Yeah. Gonna be speechless. He's eight and zero. Yeah. Just insanity. Heartbreaking for BBL. And really momentum. Bring that one from the. Completely momentum stopping, too. Yeah. And what's their answer? I mean, that was the round that they needed to win. The full investment of the money still dropped down to the, the lighter buy once more. They do have ults to work with, but the question is I mean, you don't really want to be investing him into a round like this unless it does seem feasible. Oh, and here we go, they hit a close drone. They know they can catch at least one of the players. In fact, the two players that were at the back of the site, stunned up. They're crawling, trying to escape, but Suchni will be the first one down. Putting some pressure on the DRX economy is now really important. They've just got far too much money. DRX are going to be able to buy for round upon round upon round. Oh, it's a stun play with the updraft. That's what they want to go for, Kushina. He's waiting for it. There's the fault line, and here's the double up draft, but no targets spotted. And a beautiful dart timing. Just Zest ready for it as well. Small piece of utility to push back any sort of approach that BBL might try and come up with. And crumbling to pieces. All the options. And the end result of that round is that only Zest needs to buy armor. <laughs> the, so clean. So perfectly, unbelievably clean from DRX. The, the prime gaming flawless doesn't even begin to cover it. It's an understatement. This is straight back to map one. I don't know if DRX got a stiff talking to or what in the back yeah. end, uh, you know, between maps, but they've come out with a fire lit underneath them. I think a bit of a wake up call as well. Listen, there's no team you can really underestimate in this event. Yeah, I mean, anybody can deliver an upset. I think with. With the normal double elimination format, that becomes less true, but with this single elim stuff, 32 teams, man, it really does feel like any given Sunday sometimes. Sure. But this is a different scenario for BBL. I mean, listen, they've been they've been on the brink before. You think about that first half on Ascent, where it's 8-4. They managed to come back in that scenario. So they've definitely got the fortitude to be able to at least bring it back. So drone coming out there from Zest, looking towards A, and that has actually pulled Kushner over to the right-hand part of the map, which is rough. Where on earth is this one going? Yeah, that is an odd dart. Okay, show me this dart. Where does that land? Where does it land? Where is oh, that wait, going? The All the way side. to the back of the site? He's bounced it off a tree. Yeah, and Zest can just hold the flank from that one as well. That is unusual. Can't say I've ever seen that one before. You should run. Be watched for though. Now that lockdown, T-Rex placing it. The Hunter's Fury is used as an answer to it, but three bursts eventually enough to break it. They did end up losing Brave in the process. This reflank timing is everything. Kushina trying to take an easy fight, but it won't be awarded to him. It won't be in the slightest. Seventh round on the board for TRX. That's going to be the buy. Broken once more for BBL. And another facet that was working so perfectly for BBL on Ascent is that they always had the read on where DRX were finishing. I'm not there in the comms with them, and frankly, if I was, I couldn't understand Turkish anyway. Uh, not that talented. No, uncultured and <laughs> untalented, actually. But what was working for them is that Sojini was able to get the read on where DRX were going every round, whether that was based on whether you know where Buzz was or the knife timings or whatever. Here on Haven, they are just sent scattering. Mm -hmm. That round round seven is a great example there. One drone coming out from Zest towards A lobby, and three players are pulled to A, despite the fact that the entire stack is heading in the other direction. Yeah. And what a cool idea from DRX that Zest can fake that and still be providing utility for his team on the exact opposite side of the map. Yeah, that global presence. I mean, that's hard as well. <laughs> coming from a position, it must have just been banked off of something just odd, but. I swear it's off the tree, man. Yeah, I think it is, because that tree <laughs> has so many angles to it. I was testing. It's hard to get that consistently, I'll tell you now. Yeah, that might be some kind of pixel lineup. 
I'm, I'm sure the nerdy lineup knowers in the chat are, yeah. you know. Gonna be hunting that one. Well, actually. Goes off the pillar off to the side, <laughs> off the third nail. Yeah. Well, timeout now for BBL. I believe that's the second timeout that's been used. It's really tough, but it's really yeah, necessary. It is at this point. They got good retake ultimates as well. But in the prior round, in round seven, they didn't even get a chance to do that because RB had used a post-plant lockdown and things were getting very hairy. Yeah. It just takes time away. Once more, Brave and Turco going for a push. I think they've been spotted. Yeah, but it's going to be the smoke up close. I think that's just to try and fight for a bit of that control. That's it's Brave's own smoke that he ended up popping off there. But you got to remember, maybe a little play to see if they could get anything with, again, the weaker buy. Drop down to just the pistols. And they're stacking the A site. And that's not where it is. You know, yeah. again, going off the Sova drone. Zest, Sova drones towards short, and that calls the four player stack to A. And it's just not the right read. It might be against quite a lot of other teams. Not against DRX, not today. Yeah, not too much trending towards that A lobby. Utility dumped in. Last ditch effort there by Brave. Just paying for it with his life, obviously, just jumping into the smoke to see if he can get anything done, but plan once more. Drop down, playing those post plant positions. Lovely stun, but Buzz does offset it. Tries to play in the smoke there, gets his head taken off once more. Lovely pop flash play and clean up crossfire. And you're starting to see why in rounds like these and the ones before, why Stax is considered the grandfather of Breach. Yeah. Because everything is just exactly where he wants it. Pixel perfect, all of the utility followed up on too. Yinsu was talking about Ascend me in the Turkish map. This is the map I most strongly associate with DRX. Yeah. It's not always their best map, but it was just their home territory, their style, it all just worked so well here. By the way, RB still hasn't died. Just if we want to keep That's, a running note of that. Yeah, okay. My god, how this feels instantly like map one again. All the wind taken out from BBL sales. Left scrambling, looking for those options. That's shocky there go. goes Clears the alarm bot. Zest has been in the lab. Yeah, there's Maybe some time so on the bench much. has helped him just look up lineup videos and <laughs> just stuff. Just been you know? cooking. Yeah. Just been cooking, hasn't he? A steep A lobby push from BBL. They are holding this in a couple of angles. And it's Suchny that looks like he's going to be the one who takes contact. And if this does go now towards A lobby, drone oh, cleared. Strong. Yeah, it has to be broken. Does push us back. But T Rex. They're going to be disciplined enough to realize that it could be a player. Looks like they are trying to go clear it, but no lot out it's being running. used. No utility. And that's Kushina playing off of his teammate in particular really well. Zest was just staring at the ground like a Yoru decoy for some reason. Mako just trying to pick up the pieces. A TP all the way into the seaside. Oh, and he gets denied. Great play from Asla Machado. It's time enough in a round, though, with 20 seconds, but they know where the spike is going to be. Last known location, just in a lobby. There's only a few more places they really can go. But every avenue is cut off to them here. Yeah. Ten seconds left. They have he broken. They have generational wealth to work with, though. So DRX can definitely commit to this one. Take these fights. Inside the smoke, a bit of spam just to try and break it up. RB. And he pull off the impossible once more. One found, but luckily the coverage is there. And finally, BBL. They get that round on the board. But their economy is still in shambles. Brave and Turco with only the 3,000 credits to their name, essentially. So DRX have still done damage to them. And that was RB's first death, though. So that's good. He's only 14 and 1. Fantastic play though from Kushina, just on an individual level to lock down this area for such a length of time and set his team up for the win, but I don't think that's replicable. No, it really was decided, I think, of the fact that DRX wanted to go towards A lobby. Most of the time, they haven't really been putting that pressure on. And the Haven meta is just kind of developing. Usually you see teams, you know, they dump that util into it, fault line something else, push a player up deep so they have that information, just like you're seeing here. So Dart, so Kushina can get into this close angle. But usually off the back of this, you want to rotate players away, you know? I have the spike. 
bit of a tell that they're not going to be dedicating anyone towards that area of the map. Both shock darts getting used to break the alarm bot, and for whatever reason, it didn't hit the one in Garage. It looked good, but yeah. the lineup just didn't land. BBL setup, they're not... I mean, here's the thing, they haven't been punished, actually, for this, despite that. I mean, they're still sticking with three players holding close in a lobby. Only yeah. now you're seeing Turco rotate, but DRX were expecting at least a player to be close. I mean, they have fantastic B retake ults, right? The yeah, breach ult is true. just amazing from Turco. The only problem is if they sneak through the A connector, where DRX are instead going for a C split. The smoke popped off here. Now, ultimate being used potentially to fight this. The lockdown has put a dampener on it. But they still want to commit this now. Yeah, well, that's our beat. Where did he find that one? Hulk popped off to the side. The Astral Wall was laid down with a Cosmic Divide, but it does little to stop again. DRX just barreling their way through onto the site. Wow, so important that the lockdown was broken there. You could hear them communicating it. And this is now really tough. Kushin has got to deliver the goods. And timing is everything. There's a dart into the back. He knows where one of them is remaining. It's Mako still locking it down and down to Suchni. The attacking lockdown, he can't quite find it. There's no angle in sight for him to break that one. DRX claiming once more another, not letting it get out of their hands just yet. And that's an awesome mid-round decision from DRX. They decide to go through Garage, and they're met with a lockdown in their face. Aslan just immediately puts it down. Great idea, good counter from BBL. And you can see on the player POV of Stax, talking to the rest of his team, asking, can we break this? Can we break this? Should we commit with the breach shot? And he's getting fed information from the rest of his team, makes the call as the IGL to commit to it, lockdown broken, and they get in onto the site. Everything happens so quickly with these top-level teams. <laughs> I love that. BBL using the Vision Strikers strat. <laughs> the flash and dash out into yeah. grass. If you can't beat them, join them. All that time ago when they were really put on the map, I think, from plays like that. I'm seeing it. Fast take now towards A. I saw him at his feet, but Buzz again just disrespecting it. Glimmers and echoes of it. You can see attempts are there. There was an updraft from Kushner as well, but the players dropping still one after the other. Even a shorty. Running at them. And what can Brave do? Tries to pick up a bit of an upgrade, but god damn these shock darts. Just not even given an inch. And it looks like Termi, the DRX head coach, gave an absolute dressing down between yeah. these two maps and told them, unless you beat BBL even more emphatically than you did on Pearl, I'll send you home myself. <laughs> Big buddy, you on the early flight to yeah. forfeit. Yeah. yeah. We'll just forfeit the rest of our game. This has been just an absolute battering. Oh, it's been brutal to watch. And I think from BBL's point of view, when you're, when you're faced with an opponent like this in a game like this, you can't even be that mad. No. You're like, okay, we just got comprehensively, unbelievably outplayed. And hell, at least we got a map off them. Comfort zone for them. <sighs> Trying to play inside the Cloud Burst Brave. He survives for now, but not much longer. The Hunter's Fury is used to just try and clear the oh, way. No way. Two kills. kills. Also get Aslan. There's no way. Suchni, this is the desperation. Final round, might as well use him. The ultimate's one after the other. Doesn't get too much done. The Aftershock pushing into the corner, into the angle. On the flank, Kushina. Let's get the one kill, but down to that 2v3. How can they make this happen? 45 seconds left and just spraying it down. A bit of panic in the play. The level one will be that half score line. That is a really difficult one to come back from. Yeah. That I is tough. So. And I think a lot of people will have been doubting DRX's, you know, as one of the favorites of the tournament after they lost the set. But when map one and map three are like this, they just look in such insanely good form. Yeah, just an instant answer back. RB still only died once. Yeah. And there's just so many layers to what they were doing on their attack side. With the side swapping around, that is going to be the first half done. Let's find out what the desk has to say. Well, I've, I've, when they got that first, <laughs> that first round, I thought maybe we could start to get a little bit of a comeback here for BBL. But DRX are just so well drilled and just prep and it really is off the back of you know just outstanding calls 
from Stax, but also just some heroic plays that we were seeing too from guys like RB. Yeah, it was insane. In that half, I think it took until like round number 10 for RB to die once. This guy was putting up an insane individual performance and he was also causing some really, really heartbreaking rounds for this BBL squad. There was a couple moments where they were getting close, looking like they could steal around away. This was one of them, right? BBL start off great on this retake. Brave, heroic with the 2K. They get it down to this two versus one situation, and they're getting to this point where they're like, all right, we've got this around the bag. We're gonna try and stick this one through. We have RB flash in the window, and he just swings out, kills both of them, and absolutely breaks the hearts of BBL. And those kind of things have happened over and over in this half. Yeah, they really have. I mean, his stat line right now is absolutely monstrous. 17 and one uh, coming out of this first half. And who knows how much longer of, of a game that we do have here, unfortunately, because DRX are just running away with it. Yeah. 348 coming in on this Killjoy is just nasty stuff here from the side of DRX. For BBL though, the stakes are so high for them. They need to be able to pull this back. <laughs> you know, I, at, at the very all order, at, man. The, at the very least, getting some more rounds under your belt, being able to push DRX a bit further, I think that in, in and of itself would be a win for them. Clearly, things are still early days for them. They've been showing that they have what it takes to be able to take them down. Besting them on ascent is monstrous. So if a run back yeah. can start, it would be absolutely enormous for them to get it going. And it's all about this pistol, right, Mimi? You have to clutch up here. You really do. It has to start right here, right now. No more room for error or you're headed home. All right, well, let's see what ends up happening with this one as we wrap up Haven. Let's send it back over to Brennan Sideshow. No more room for error, I think, sums it up quite nicely because uh, it's going to take, honestly, perfect gameplay from BBL to be able to mount any sort of comeback. They have one round as a buffer. Yeah. Not wasting too much time. That's a Nana Swarm drop down. What an opening. Okay. Kushina really fighting hard for that one. Just running his way right down. And now to squeeze that one player that was Mako holding into short. Cleaned up momentarily. Faster play to still. Stax tries to drop down to catch a cheeky timing. But there's the pistol round one at least. And I think I have slightly a different perspective to Seth on the desk, where I don't really think BBL need that many more rounds to feel happy about what they've accomplished. Their pistol rounds have looked good. Yeah. They've actually been able to win a bunch of those. And they've taken a map away one from one of the favorites of the tournament too. It is just gonna be so unbelievably impossible for them to win this map and claw their way back from a deficit like this. Yeah. But I think, they can just soak it in. Enjoy being here. Taking the experience of it. That's for certain. You are right, Josh. You know, a certain level of pride, I think, for them being able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a team like DRX on Ascent. The fact that they were able to take that one away from them. There's a lot of pride involved in just being on your team for partnership, sure. right? Making yeah. it to that 1% of the Valorant pros that are representing their team, their region, etc for BBL, their country too, at that top level. We'll see just really trajectory, I think, of a team like BBL. Now getting deeper into what's left of the series and you know, potentially on the other side of this tournament. Yeah, I think a lot of people were completely counting them out and that's not what's happened today. No. Showcase that do have a lot to play for still. That's a lot of utility being used, but nothing to clear into short. <laughs> Z Zest has just slipped his way into short. They gotta know this isn't cleared, right? Yes. Yeah. But also, I don't think you really expect the Sova to be tucked. Slan is watching just that one extremity. Last player standing. I don't think Zest is gonna be able to win the 1v5 with the Classic, though. Yeah, seems unlikely. <laughs> Making it look like a bit more than a classic. <laughs> he gave it a good try, didn't he? He really did, yeah. <laughs> Trust me. Okay, me BBL with, with a bonus. Like BBL with another five rounds after that. And then, then, we'll, then, then we can then start talking. Then you're talking about it? Then okay. we can start talking. Okay. Yeah, at this point, it's still uh, far too early days, I think. Yeah. Just not enough room for error when it comes to it. It literally has to be perfect from here on out. I think this is a good time, though, to showcase what you've got on the world stage, right? Yeah. I think. A good opportunity to show people that they shouldn't count you out for future tournaments, for 
EMEA, VCT, you know, that kind of stuff. I think the evolution of this team as well, you know, BBL in the past have been, you know, the descriptive term that I've used has been quite one dimensional, I think, in the way that they thought about the game, the way that they played the game with overall game plans. But the addition of Suchini as an IGL, I think, I already see it paying dividends with that Ascent map. Yeah, it's a promising start, isn't it? Yeah. They've definitely got things that they can come away being happy about. Moving their way forwards here, just a little bit of poking and prodding towards Garage. As DRX have still managed to hold on to that spot, RB's turret not getting broken. Seems like that would have been a major win for BBL's macro game. But heading back, pushing Buzz away from the angle. Buzz though not calling for any reinforcements just yet. And that, that is going to throw BBL off because you would definitely assume that Zest or Stax would have rotated today. And actually now they do, it's just a little later. But here's where you see Zochny actually, you know, helping them come up with good game plans because yeah. they're reading that move, knowing that there's going to be more players over towards A and hitting the weak side of the map. Well, here we go. Hit coming through, dart into the back. Dash forwards, but not enough spam damage. And look at the absolute mountain of utility. Mako is so uncomfortable, but Arby returning fire. And left down to Aslan. Position. Not quite known just yet, but it looks like Mako is relatively aware, and that is going to be the 12th round gained. No more room for error at all for BBL. It's going to be that match point, that series point for DRX. And if DRX's goal was to make it just as dominant as Pearl, they would have to convert in this one coming up right now. 13-3. Let's see what they got for us. I think a lot of people are going to be watching DRX and feeling really good about the way that they've performed here on Pearl and Haven, assuming that they can close out the map fairly quickly here. So a bit of a lobby control from Buzz, from Zest, oh, really this. pushed up. This is dangerous. Very dangerous. Only the one for one. On defense side, it's not the most ideal outcome. We've seen crashes go for us overall from this position that got so much value, but Zest decides to play it a little more slowly. He's getting himself into some really tricky positions over a short. Not the best spot for a Sova to play. Yeah. A lot of they it are the unexpected. Mako smokes, honestly, have been doing the most as well. Just an extra layer in play, making sure that they can't quite clear it, but there we go. Now the presence is met pound for pound. RB just trying to push them back. Not able to do so. Spike is going to go down now, and it is just left up to Mako, who's going to opt to the save. Percentage BBL plays. still with life in them. Yeah. Making this one a closer game than Pearl. DRX are going to have to take another eco here and still figure things out. I don't know how far Buzz is along to his ultimate, actually. He might be able to scramble a bite together. Yeah, it might be able to go for to. something weird, but I don't see really why you would. It doesn't make sense to take risks and let BBL back into the game. Yeah. But that was off the back of breaking Buzz's really extended position. And then Zest also choosing to take a really odd position, in my opinion. There's a Sova pushing close there up on short. You're not able to get value out of any of your utility when the site hit comes through. And he didn't really have a teammate to play off either. Yeah. I feel like the composition as well that DRX are playing is, I mean, it's particularly good for retakes. You have great tools, the paranoia, the dart, all the breach utility as well to clear out hell. If you do want to play retake on A, it's more than viable. When you play in short like that, any good team is going to be cleared you out. Definitely true. We'll see if they adjust their game plan, though. Singular rifle from Mako, who saved it in the previous round. And this is where BBL should be able to convert. I've seen so many situations like this, though, Bren, where teams need to get a comeback, and it all falls to pieces on a thrifty. It's these rounds that are the dangerous ones. They, you, know, you should be thinking, you know, percentage-wise, should be favoured. With the rifles, one taking contact. That is an incredibly wide angle to be taken <laughs> with a shorty, son. Not getting into the montage of that one. No, that one's that one's not touching it. <laughs> Adobe Premiere. <laughs> <laughs> Well and good though. Flick of the wrist from Stax. And it's not going to be this thrifty round. Yeah. Not now, not today, says BBL. Getting a fifth on the board. And making their attack side look 
fairly decent. They look coordinated. They have game plans. They've kept it fairly simple too, I would say, in round 16, round 17, just flushing out A. That's where most of the fighting is happening right now, around that A lobby area. But maybe BBL will have a different idea with the alts on board. Breach alt is also really good towards A, though. Yeah, it is. Right here. I'll find them. Quite fantastic, but... Oh, a little dash down short play, this looks like. This recon dart lands at the top of short. So, is there going to be a punish here onto Buzz? Doesn't look like it, actually. No, he's out of the line of side of it, so he's not going to get revealed. And he didn't get contested by Kushina. Normally, teams will sync that up with a jet dash or something like that to put early pressure down short. I think he's got them contained, though, hasn't he? Oh, okay, Kushina's just trying to dash a punish. And that's a stun up just to try and bail out Zest to claim the kill. Brave does make it even, though. It's a good punish, and Suchini's leaving, leading the team all the way over to C instantly. That's Look at that. Call. Great read. Yeah. Great read. Great call. Haven's just got so many opportunities for IGLs to show their worth, right? You see people like FNS, for example. It's like a playground for him. Yeah. I was associated getting a, with that. You're getting a little flavor of this here, too. Oh, Mako has got himself into a wild spot, though. And RB pays for it. Yeah, I mean, TPing into the smoke caused him to spam it. It was RB, like you said, paying for that. Unfortunate indeed, but that lockdown, pushing him back. Brave just skirting the outside of it. Aslan is going to be detained, but the spike is dropped down. Now, just how dangerous does this get? With Mako low, and the money also low, looks like TRX are opting again into that percentage play. Yeah, and BBL have all the alts to stop this. There's literally a 0% chance that Zest and Mako could win this. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> you, you know, you've got a reflank coming out from Brave, which they were aware of, but also the Soverall, Breach Alt, that can stop you. And at that point, if DRX chose to commit, it would just be to pull out Sochni and Turco's ult. And instead, I think the better option is to just keep the Vandals alive. It adds so much more danger to your eco rounds. What a difference gonna, this half has been. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, Brent. We're kind of getting to the point where... Close. What did you say? Was it eight rounds? I said they had to win, what was it, round 15 and five more, something like that. Which I think would have brought it up to... Around eight in total, so seven or eight. Never do maths on broadcast, because uh, you will look like an idiot. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It was around that number, you know, like... Yeah, it would have brought it up to nine, but that's fine. It would, I mean, eight is nearly nine. It was a rounding error from me, sorry. Right, right. Yeah. Operator on the board here for DRX. That Zest is... This is so bizarre. What's okay. going on here? Yep. And these are the rounds you need to be careful of. Despite the buy being a bit weak, I think it's because Buzz ends up having his ult to play with. The Blade Storm. Hunter's Fury is beautiful. Does trade it out. But it's still a bit of a weird one. Any sort of mistake. And you never know with these kind of rounds. Your series, your tournament life just could be over in the blink of an eye. But BBL offered... A nice uncontested plan. Buzz with the knife, still looking to contest, and then you see that Turkish confidence coming through once more with the gunplay. Unwavering faith in their teammates, able to just solidly clean up the rem uh, remaining members there of DRX. Yeah, and despite the fact that DRX had some dangerous weaponry, the operator, Buzz with his knives, you know, it was still a half five, but it had a lot of power behind it. Uh, BBL is still really clean. Yes. And I'm not going to lie, Brett, if BBL win this next round, I think I think the the squeeze is going to start to be felt by DRX. A fine day. Certainly feels like it. Because this is suddenly getting out of control. I think BBL, listen, I'm not going to say the usual, which is like, oh, what resilience they've shown to come back in this situation. We've already seen it over the course of the series. Yeah, definitely. They've been able to come back from, admittedly, not, not as much of a deficit as this first half was. But DRX choosing this now as an opportunity to take that time out, and it's around the time, like you just said, Josh, that it's this upcoming round that's going to be really important. If yes. this doesn't go DRX's way, then spell, you know, very troublesome times ahead. And I'm going to be honest, DRX being sent home after being 11-1 up on Haven is, that's not on anyone's bingo card. That cannot no. be allowed to happen. From, from DRX's perspective, the coaches, the players, they would never live it down. I mean, that would be, that would be, a blemish on an otherwise very consistent record. Yeah, an absurd choke to end all chokes. So DRX taking it slow. 
put in the time out here, trying to stop a bit of that momentum that's behind BBL. You see Vlad, the coach there of BBL, just spitting to his players. Yeah, using the most. Because I think at this point, you know, BBL were playing like they had nothing to lose at the beginning of this half because, I mean, they were essentially done. And now maybe a bit of belief, a bit of hope is starting to rekindle within their hearts. Five Certainly rounds, if they get this it? round. Yeah, it's five that stands between them bringing it to that OT. That is their goal. It's within their grasp now, it's within the sight line. Got to start to believe in this one, but every single round is so hard. What a hurdle, because again, no room for mistakes. Has to be perfect. C is left completely open right now. A whole lot of utility being used, including their own breach hole, which catches onto the side of Kyushin. The guy is being rattled around the back of the side, like no one's business. Now the Swamp dropped into just the corner of it, pushes him into an unfavorable angle, and he is dealt with enough. But BBL with the rifle still swinging through. Stacks might have just put an end to it, weaving his way into the sight, and it's all down to Brave. In just a blink of an eye, it all comes down to this. He finds the one target. Little smoke drop down, consumes it to give him the sightline angle, but Buzz will be the finisher. And it was a valiant effort from BBL, make no mistake about that. But DRX were in control of this series. It got a bit shaky, for sure on map two, arguably map three. But DRX, I think, could still be pretty confident that they're looking decent to advance throughout the bracket. Not by any means a bad showing, though, from BBL. No. Being able to take a map away from the team that finished third at Champions, and also having a bit of a comeback here listen, in the final map, too. That was looking Six rounds is so doable, but when you... Off, I, listen, when it's 11-1 and a half, you afford yourself no room for error, no buffer at all. No. But these guys, they played their hearts out on the grand stage, on the global stage. They yep. went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And like you said, Josh, with the team that went third in Japs, yeah. I mean, this is a showcase of their skills. You're putting a lot of these names on the map for people who otherwise were relatively unaware of them. And this is just the beginning for a team like BBL. Like we said before, they've added this new IGL, Suchini coming in, and you can already see the ideas taking place, developing for this team. But it is the RX that are going to advance, and they are going to be playing the winner of Paper X and Cloud9. Wow. What a banger of a bracket. An unbelievably stacked little area of the alpha bracket. Brent, if I had to ask you, do, does the RX look like they're in the form to go deep, to take, you know, a, a semi-finals appearance, to be able to beat a Paper X or a Cloud9, who we haven't seen, by the way. Yeah, but if I... I had to put you on the spot, do you feel confident, more confident now, having watched that DRX game? Before the tournament, I would have said that they would have been clear favorites, but at this point, I don't think you can say so. No disrespect to BBL the way that they played. Listen, they, they really did push the RX into some uncomfortable territory for them. But I think the fact that they you know, weren't able to cleanly close out, not only just the second map, you know, when it was 8-4, but that, that first one, then you get to the state, or the third one, I should say, on Haven, then get to the state that it was. I think a lot of people are going to have really conflicting opinions about yeah. DRX's performance here. Because map one was so dominant, and the first half of Haven was it's outrageously dominant too. It was such a strange series. You saw the highest peaks from DRX, yeah. and then you also saw them get pushed by a team that people weren't expecting to be offering too much resistance. Yeah. Not much to lose. It was a really odd series, and I think, you know, the, the smart response is just, we'll have to wait and see. Have to wait and see, but guess what? We're gonna be finding out their opponents coming up after this match itself as well, because honestly, what should be, you know, the main card, I think, of the day, that Paper X Cloud 9 game. Yeah, we get to see the finalists of Copenhagen up against Cloud9, one of the first lauded super teams, honestly. That's the label that people were putting on that team when they were really formed heading into this 2023 season, because they have an absolute stacked roster. <laughs> and a stacked bracket. Yeah. Like we said, DRX is gonna be playing against a winner, so whether you're a DRX fan or whether you're you know, tuning in to watch Paper X Cloud9, everyone's eyes should be glued onto that game just to see what might be happening over there because the DRX, make no mistake, one of the favorites for the tournament, but they could definitely 
have potentially lost here, yeah. potentially lost second round. Like, it's single or limb. There's, 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 Literally there's no holds happen. barred. Anything can happen as well. Let's take a look as well at our kind of player of the match breakdown as well. I believe you can see. And yeah, you can vote as well with the QR code. Buzz stacks zest are the options we've got for us here, Josh. Who would you go with there? I really feel like that's a, a difficult one to. Yeah, to, because to if you try and say, you know, listen, it was the IGL impact with stacks, I mean, listen, there was some. Yeah, there was some. some some dodgy moments. Some dodgy sure. moments, right, yeah. with the rounds. I was impressed with how Buzz played. I thought he was still performing at a really high level. RB obviously yeah. played phenomenally on Haven, but, you know, not included in the poll, presumably because of the first two matches. But it's a tricky I, one. I don't know. I think this one really is tricky. I think I might yeah. give it a Buzz, but I think it was more of a just group effort. When they were winning, they were steamrolling. And when they were losing, it was all falling to pieces. Yeah, absolutely. Well, guess what? Like I said earlier, we are not done yet. There is one more match left to be played. It's going to be an absolute gigabanger. You don't want to go anywhere. So short break, but we'll be right back.
Before we begin, we wanted to pay our respects to all those impacted by the Turkey and Syria earthquake with a moment of silence. We thank you so much, and of course our hearts and minds are with everyone that has impacted by the tragedy. Now, as we focus on the matchup at hand, you know, there's a lot on the line here. I think that you are going to see nothing left on the table. Both of these teams is going to give it everything that they absolutely have to walk away victorious. And the space onto the site, another pop flash play should make it nice and easy. Lovely little offset of the movement there by Kyush. Close to the site, and he knows his position now, and a bit of util will finish it off. DRX coming away with a well anticipated, but nevertheless impressive and intimidating map one against BBL. Wow, they look scary. To the back of the site, that is with the spike, but cleared back. A reset of the aim zest. Absolute demonic performance. Woo! The damage done still gets the kill. An easy pick is through the smokes. You know, players have to remain cool, calm, and collected, and they are. Lovely start, but socially cleans up the other players. BBL going to claim map number two in this series when everything was looking done and dusted. And DRX has just gone for such a simple approach to this round, keeping it safe. Nice. It's up to RB to see if he can deny. One after the other! There's no shot in hell. The Hunter's Fury is used to just try and clear the way. Oh, no way. Two Zest kills. Also get Aslan. Mako is so uncomfortable, but RB returning fire. And it was a valiant effort from BBL, make no mistake about that. But DRX were in control of this series. And those are your Prime Gaming post-match highlights and what truly was an excellent series. And funny enough, a historic series as well because that was the first time in Valorant's history uh, that a Korean team played an all-Turkish team. So history was made. I don't think anyone was disappointed with that one. A lot of things to talk about from there. Of course, I'm Golden Boy alongside with Mimi as well as Achilles here. And let's actually uh, just start with the breakdown here and, and discuss how that Haven game went because I think you know, toward the end, if you're DRX, you're kind of thinking, this might get a little crazy. <laughs> but it didn't. They but kept didn't. control of this one. I, I mean, they came into this matchup, and they absolutely dominated in that first half. It took them a while to convert in the second, but really they were just kind of winding up time to get those ultimates going and eventually close it on out. It never really felt like there was a way for BBL to get back into that game. Yeah, I mean, Sideshow was talking about it. it. It felt like it was too far gone, but I'll admit, I started panicking a little bit there for the set of yeah. DRX. Uh, there's a ton of tape that you can watch on all of these maps aside from Pearl, and it, it, I mean, we saw it from Ascent especially. Yeah, that BBL, they did their research. Yeah, and the thing is that this is DRX continuing their streak. They have never lost an opening series at an international event ever. These guys are always making a deep run. They're almost always getting at least that top six, if not higher. But respect to BBL, because they issued DRX their first ever map loss in one of those opening series. Well, I was yeah. going to say, what, they haven't lost against a top four team, right? Or, they, or a team outside of the top yeah. four. But I think it's safe to say, especially in that Ascent game, BBL took them to the limit. And I think had a lot of people questioning, maybe this might not work out the way that DRX fans were hoping for, Achilles. I mean, initially, I was thinking that this was just going to end up being you know, the, the case that DRX just can't possibly win on a set unless it goes to overtime, just given <laughs> what we saw over at uh, at Champs. But PBL, they did so beautifully. I mean, Q should have really came online. Yeah. We saw even in those first, uh, you know, those first couple rounds that they were able to win on Pearl. Uh, you know, he was pretty much the one who was picking up those kills. As soon as he flips back over onto the jet, he just started absolutely going crazy. And it kind of carried through, you know, really he was instrumental in helping them get those rounds that they were able to get on Haven to start running things back. So as he got over to the jet, he just really started to take off. Yeah, I mean, BBL had their moments and Kushiner was such a huge part of that, putting up consistently solid, if not fantastic performances, even when they were losing out yeah. in these maps. He was a big reason on Ascent that this team was able to convert, but it wasn't just him. It wasn't a solo mission of this one man. That Ascent game was this squad coming in well prepared and beating one of the best yeah. Ascent teams that we have out there in a VCT. So respect to BBL. Yeah, and that means, unfortunately, we have to say goodbye uh, to the Turkish fan favorites and BBL. Obviously a team that, you know, I mean, let's not 
<laughs> let's not beat around the bush. They had the weight of the world on their shoulders in this series. And on top of that, they knew that they had an opponent on the other side that was just so confident coming into this event, especially what happened at Champ. So credit where credit is doing. I, I'm going to make a bold claim, okay? GB's bold claim of the day, all right? I think BBL can become a top contending team if they drill the maps the way that they drill the scent. Their ascent game looked phenomenal, but I got to see that across the board. And I think they have the staff and the consistency and the talent on that team, uh, Achilles, in order for them to do so, I hope, I hope we start to see that happen in EMEA. I want to be hopeful of it. Oh, for sure. I mean, clearly the talent is there. We had everybody having a, their moment in the spotlight. Turco, Kushner, everyone was taking part in that win on a set and taking part in that, that run back attempt there on Haven. So clearly the talent is there. It's about continuing to just mold it and just start drilling in, a, you know, some Especially more Especially now set they have place. an IGL. Exactly. Yeah. So, and, you know, Credit to Sushi as well for keeping the team level headed after getting smashed on Pearl to be able to go back, bounce back into Ascent, and then start running back on Haven after they were down so brutally. That's a really good showing from them. So I think with more time to develop as they play in EMEA, you could see a hell of a lot of great results coming out of the squad. Yeah, well, of course, uh, we hope to see them uh, a little bit uh, more in the future. But before the break, though, we asked you guys to vote for the player of the match. And this was a hard one for us all to pick, but the polls are in. So let's see who ended up getting this player of the match and it's going to be Buzz and you know what very well deserved he had a great series yeah but a very close one and I think that that series was not one where I walk away with it and I'm like wow Buzz was insane he was the guy who won this match for DRX it was they were consistently good across the board yes both on map number one and three they looked perfectly drilled the way the utility was working to set Buzz up to, to set this team up for success was absolutely fantastic it this was team. what we've come to expect for DRX just real quick this team they look like they're here to win an event Achilles. they do i mean they always are i just true. haven't been able to do it's it yet true. so maybe this is the time hey right I, I would love to see that happen a potential deep run for drx but for more on that big win let's actually send it over to Yinsu because she's going to be standing by with buzz for our verizon post-match interview Thank you very much, Golden Boy. That is right. I am joined by Buzz uh, from DRX. We're going to try and do this interview in English, but if he uh, needs a bit of help, we got Jen here on site to do some translation. Now, first of all, congratulations. As you saw on stream, you are the MVP. Uh, the fans voted for, uh, that for you. I know last year you were a little bit critical of your own performance. You always thought you could have done better. Uh, now, winning MVP straight off the bat in 2023, uh, how did you think your performance was today? And what would you like to do for the rest of the year? Um, my performance today was not really bad but I'm not satisfied with my performance today because we lost one map and I think I think I had so many mistakes in all the maps so I need to keep fixing my mistake and keep going yeah I mean if that's one MVP you might be getting a few it depends how this tournament is gonna go now of course uh, a couple weeks ago you know Stax revealed that Foxy9 was supposed to be playing this tournament we didn't see him today it was Zest on there would you be able to tell me why that was and why Zest was kind of being uh, put back into the squad? Uh, it's very secret, but we just played three maps today. So who knows? Who knows if he can play? He could play. Who knows? Everyone know. Uh, everyone doesn't know. So oh. just wait for the just wait for the next match, and he could he could play. Just his goat and his aim is so cracked. So you know, Foxy will dominate the server. Okay, maybe we get maybe we get a little bit of Foxy uh, before this tournament ends. Um, now you're one of the tournament favorites. The desk now is building up you as you know the team that could go all the way. Mainly because you didn't make uh, major roster changes. You kept all of your comps as well. Do you feel like you're the tournament favorites? And is that the advantage you currently have? Oh, today, many people will be playing in this game. After DRX, more so, I'm talking about a very strong winner in this game. I'm feeling that I feel like I'm doing it as well. No, I think uh, in this tournament, everyone is playing good. So I think we, if, if we could, if we play good, we could win this tournament. But it's just, it's just first tournament in 2023. So I, we, we don't think this tournament like, like seriously. So, so it's just warm up. 
Oh, okay, okay. I, I thank you very much, Buzz, for uh, answering the question. Thank you as well, Jen, for uh, translating. Now, we've had a feast of a day, you guys, but can you believe it? It is about to get better. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, Cloud9 will be taking on Paper X. We'll see you in a bit.